Okay, so in this training video, I'll be going over the basics of boat anatomy. Start off, I'm going to talk about stern drive, inboard outboard, or IO style boat. Uh, you'll hear all three names uh, for this style of boat, but stern drive I get is tends to be the more common, but you definitely will hear all three. So a stern drive, what that does is it combines inboard power with an outboard drive. So you're going to have your inboard engine just like this. The block is going to be inside the boat here. And then you're going to have the outboard drive coming out the back. And that's also known as the outdrive. So the outdrive acts as the rudder causing the boat to turn. So this outdrive is going to be able to turn left and turn to the right, which is going to cause the boat is what you're going to be able to steer the boat with is the outdrive. So the outdrive can be lifted up and down for trailering, trimming boat while driving, and avoiding objects underwater. So as you can see here in our boat up top, the outdrive is the lowest point in the water. So if you have any objects in the water, so if you, my cursor here was a rock and you were cruising along, obviously that's going to be the first thing to get hit depending on the water level that you're in. The nice thing about stern drive is that this will raise, you can raise and lower that so that when you're in a little shallow water you have that ability to raise and lower that drive. Also uh, when you're out driving the boat you can raise and lower the drive giving the boat a little different um, handling to it. If you're in rough water, water skiing, you know, depending on what you want the boat to do you can raise and lower that drive as you're, as you're driving to give the boat a little different feel. Also you have to lift that out drive all the way up to trailer the boat or to take your boat off uh, off the water or that would just be dragging down the street. Uh, these style of boats they're great for you know everything from cruising, skiing, wakeboarding and just all around recreational use. These are generally the most common type of boat if you're just a recreational boater and you uh, kinda like to do a little bit of everything. Outboard style of boat um, it contains the engine, gearbox, and all the propeller in one unit to give us a little better look here. You can see we've got the engine head, so this is the engine. And then you have the mounting bracket where this mounts to the boat, as you can see here. And then you have the lower unit. So outboards are generally used to propel smaller boats and commonly seen on fishing style boats. So, and that's not always the case, but generally they're more common on smaller boats. Um, you can steer this, um, well let me go over that in a second, but you can easily remove this for storage. So this right here is where it mounts to the boat and you can detach that, remove it for storage or maintenance. So this entire uh, unit is mounted on that pivot point like I was saying, but this whole thing is going to have to turn to be able to steer the boat. So a lot of times you'll see on smaller style boats, you'll see the guys sitting in the back of the boat steering it by hand. And a lot of times these outboards will have handles coming out here that you can control the speed and throttle with the control handle and also be able to steer it. But on bigger boats like this one here, this is generally going to be hooked up to a steering system, just like any other boat where you're going to have your steering wheel and you'll have a steering cable system hooked up to this so you can steer it from um, the driver's seat. Next we're going to talk about direct drive boats or straight inboards. So the engine in this boat sits right in the middle uh, and it has a propeller shaft running straight out the back as you can see here, it's just running out the back. The thing about direct drives is the engine is in a very inconvenient spot. It sits directly in the middle of the boat so as you can see here you don't have much seating option. You've got a couple seats here and then the bench seat in the back. But this um, is kind of a rough image right here of what that looks like. So you're going to have your engine and then the prop shaft runs straight out the back. Um, so this prop is in a fixed position and that cannot be trimmed up or down. Um, there's a separate rudder right here in, in the back of the boat. So this is what's going to steer the boat. 
Um, so these are, even though this might seem a little inconvenient, they're actually really nice for water skiing um, and some other water sports. They're okay for wakeboarding, but generally if you're really into water skiing, this is the type of boat to get. Um, they're not really great for cruising or, you know, cruising from one end of the lake to the other. I mean, generally with a boat like this, you've pretty much got skiing in mind and that's what you're going to be doing with this style of boat. The nice thing about them is they create a small wake with the engine being more in the center of the boat and it creates a stronger even pull uh, when you're getting pulled straight from the center. As you can see the pylon here and the engine in the center helps keep the boat from swaying back and forth when you have a really strong skier cutting out really hard. It helps the boat stay in a nice uh, steady line and keeps the skier from pulling the back of the boat around. So here's a V-drive boat and from this, the profile of this it looks almost the exact same as the direct drive. But the, the way the motor is set is it sits in the back of the boat with the V-drive system. That's going to look just like this. So you're going to see the engine here, you're going to see the shaft coming out of the engine, and then this is the V-drive system, and it's going to go back, the prop shaft goes back out the back of the boat. Now the nice thing about that is it's going to offer more seating than the direct drive. And here's a look. This is pretty much what all V-drives will look like inside. You'll have bench seating all around the side and in the back, and then you'll have the driver's seat and I 99% of the time it'll be an open bow as well to get so you can fit a lot of uh, people in a boat like that. This would definitely be the best style of boat for wake surfing, wakeboarding, and wake skating. These tend to put out the best wake um, for doing those types of sports. You can they're easy to weigh down if you want to make a really big wake for surfing or wakeboarding. This is definitely the boat to go with. Again. The only time I'd really buy a boat like this or that you would recommend a boat is if the people had water sports in mind and that's what they were wanting to do at the lake was strictly water sports. Again, this wouldn't make for a great cruising boat from one end of the lake to the other, but um, definitely it's a great boat for water sports. Next we have jet drives, as you can see here, most of you are probably familiar with jet skis or wave runners. And how they work, or they're propelled by a jet of water ejected from the back of the watercraft. Now I got a little picture here to kind of show you how this works. As the water passes underneath the watercraft, there's an intake right here, and it will get sucked in through an impeller, and then it will get pushed out the back. Also you can see that they have jet uh, propelled boats. These are becoming actually very popular. And again, it draws the same with the boat. It draws water in through the intake and it produces a high pressure push or jet out the back. They have a very shallow draft that can be used in lower water levels. Now, draft means, I haven't said that, talked about that yet, but what that refers to is if you look at this wave runner right here, you see the water line and the bottom of the wave runner and that's considered the draft, how far the watercraft sits in the water. Now the nice thing about these type of boats and watercraft is just like I can compare this to a stern drive boat, if this was my rock again and you're coming through, you can see there's no out drive here and nothing for me to hit um, on a rock. So these are great for shallow waters um, and you don't really have to worry about ripping your out drive off on a boat like this. Again, the handling is not as good as it, uh, it is on a, um, a stern drive boat, but they're definitely becoming more popular um, around Utah. So basic boat anatomy, I'm just going to go over some terms here that you need to remember. First, uh, the bow, this is considered open bow, you can see. And next is the cockpit area where the driver's sitting and where the passengers sit. Bimini top there, that's going to provide the shade. Wakeboard tower, that's what you want to hook. If you're wakeboarding, you wakeboard off the tower. Generally, if you're solemn skiing, there'll be a pylon or you go right off the back of the boat. So you have the stern, which is the back of the boat, and the transom. The transom is a term that you'll need to know as well. 
transom is this flat um, back here on the back of the boat is considered to be the transom. Uh, swim platform, you have the gunnel. Uh, the gunnel is this hole from the back of the boat all the way to the bow. What makes up pretty much the side of the boat where this tower is mounted is considered to be the gunnel. You have the hole here and the hole is from this rub rail line down is really considered to be the hole. And then you have the keel which is another term that you'll be hearing a lot and that's this line that runs all the way down the center line of the boat that's considered to be the keel. Here's another look for you. In this, this particular model, I have a Supra Launch 21V. That's the make and model and the size of the boat. And that's going to help because the center line length is 21 feet, 4 inches. So hopefully you can kind of see how that relates. So when someone comes in saying they have a 21V, a lot of times they're referring to the length of their boat. And this will be important knowing this when helping people with boat covers and bimini tops. This is the beam width. Um, you'll need to know, ask people a lot what their beam width is on a boat to know how to help them with the bimini top or a boat cover. So this particular one here is 99 inches, but these, these are two important measurements that you need to know a lot of the time to help a lot of customers. Here's a little picture down here to help kind of describe some other features. I think I've gone over most of them, so you've got the beam. The freeboard is the one I don't think I've gone over. It's pretty much from the rub rail down to the water line is considered the freeboard area. Uh, that term's not used that much, to be honest, but draft is one that's very good to know from the water line to the bottom of the boat. And then again, you have the keel, which is this right in this area. You have the center line. This area right in here is considered to be the keel.